Chapter 11 Everyone stared out the living room window. Silver stood a mile away, on top of the hill Owen and the others had taken to get to this neighborhood. The giant looked around, casting a few glances in the direction of the Matthews house. At times, Owen felt it was staring a little too long at this house. He backed away from the window. Why is it here? Doug asked. You turned off the orb on our way here, didn't you? Curtis asked Owen. Maybe it's following some kind of energy trail and searching the area. Owen said nothing. For some reason, all he could think about was Chris. He was still out there somewhere, and Owen had sworn he'd go back for him. He just had to work around the fact that his best friend was a super-powered zombie. Owen walked down the hallway to the bathroom. When he got there, he immediately threw up in the toilet. Everything that was happening just seemed too much to him now. Aliens were invading Earth. Daniel and Alyssa were dead. Chris was missing. And Owen still wasn't sure what to do with the orb. He wasn't even sure he'd find answers at his farmhouse. He just felt that was the way to go. He knew for sure that he couldn't just give the orb to the invaders. They could be evil just like Michael and Jason. Michael and Jason. Owen hadn't really thought of them in a while. Michael had been unconscious or dead the last time Owen had seen him. Jason, on the other hand, was alive and well and hell-bent on getting his hands on the orb again. The look in his eyes that night at the garage, when Owen made claim to the object, had been frightening. Owen had known at that moment that he hadn't seen the last of the brothers. He flushed the toilet and left the bathroom. As soon as he stepped into the hallway, he saw a door across from him cracked open. He assumed this was Colin and Vanessa's room. He opened the door a little and looked in. The room was dark since the sky was cloudy outside and a ceiling fan spun noisily overhead. He saw Colin lying on the bed, face down. Owen knocked on the door to get his attention. Come in, Colin said without looking. Owen came in and closed the door behind him. You hiding in here? Not hiding, napping. You're not napping, Owen said. You're hiding, from me. Colin grabbed the pillow and hugged it. What makes you think that? Vanessa told me about your arm. Owen hesitated, wondering if he should have ratted her out like that. About how you took my leaving so badly, when we were younger. It wasn't that big a deal, Colin said, facing him now. Really? Owen grabbed Colin's left arm from under the pillow. What's this, then? Colin didn't answer. He just stared at his exposed arm, at the scars. Was your dad really that bad? Owen asked. You were here. Don't you remember what he was like? I don't know what I remember anymore. I didn't even know how my dad died. I had to hear it from you. That's weird. Why do you think that is? Don't know. Owen chuckled. It's like everything's mixed up in my head. I barely remember even leaving this house. It's like I was sleepwalking the whole time, you know? I don't doubt that, Colin said. You never talked when you were here. We assumed it was shock or something. I just wish I could have gone with you. My dad went berserk after you went missing. Not like he was worried about you, but more like he was worried about how people would react when they found out he lost you. He didn't take it out on you, did he? He sorta did. He didn't hit me or anything. He just yelled a lot. He said I was supposed to keep an eye on you, that he couldn't do this alone. I'm sorry, Owen said quietly. You had a good life in San Sebastian? Colin asked. Yeah, it was pretty good. Before Michael showed up, 
he added in his head. Then it's okay. Tell me about your friends, what you did while you were there. Well, Owen didn't know what to tell. There were some strange things in the city. I saw a mutant fish in Trident River. Say what? Colin's interest was piqued. Yeah, we kept him as a pet. I named him Bentley. Thinking about Bentley made Owen feel guilty. He decided not to tell Colin about how he killed the poor dogfish's family. What happened to him? Colin asked. Bentley? He ran away. He didn't mind telling him that much, since it was true. He's probably better off. Things got kind of bad at home anyway. Like what? All kinds of crap. Owen didn't want to talk about it, even though he had set himself up for it. Did you make a new best friend? Colin suddenly asked, changing the subject. Yeah, his name was Chris. He was a pretty cool guy. Owen realized he was speaking of Chris in the past tense, which worried him. Chris wasn't lost yet. Owen told himself he was going to find him and return him to the way he used to be. The wife wants to know why you guys have a perfectly good car, even though you said you were in an accident, Colin said with a grin. We were in a car accident, just not with that car. Do I want to know? About the car, I mean? No. Fair enough. Colin turned on his back and stared up at the ceiling. Owen looked around the dark room, growing colder by the second from the fan. There was an exercise bike in the far corner by the dresser. The curtains were drawn on the window, giving the room a bluish tint. What's going on out there? Colin asked. Outside. I wish I knew, Owen said knowing that Colin was referring to the giants. I know I'm a grown man, but I'm going to be devastated when you leave again. Owen laughed. Devastated is a strong word. Well, I was devastated when you left the first time. Colin wasn't smiling. I'll visit you often. I'll want to see little Sydney grow up. Yeah, you can be Uncle Owen. A moment of silence went by, then the two of them laughed hard. It was like old times, or so Owen thought. He wasn't sure if any of the memories he had of him and Colin growing up together were real. What is with these goofy bangs? Colin flicked Owen's blonde bangs with a finger. Dude, don't knock the bangs. You need to try some styling gel. Colin got up and walked to his bathroom. Owen joined him. You use gel? Owen asked. Hell yeah. Colin pointed to a stylishly sloppy do. You think this happens by accident? Colin grabbed a green jar of styling gel and scooped a handful. Owen stared at it nervously, then let Colin mix it into his hair. He worked for a few minutes with Owen's short hair, then asked him what he thought. Owen looked into the mirror and saw his hair was as sloppy cool as Colin's. The gel scent was nice. Holy crap, this actually looks pretty good. I know, right? The two of them stared at their reflections for a moment. Then Owen said, That truck outside, you said it's yours? Of course. Come on, I'll show you. It's badass. Owen followed him out of the bedroom and down the hall to the kitchen. Vanessa was there, pouring a bowl of cereal. What are you two doing? she asked. I'm going to show him my truck. Are you sure that's a good idea? I mean, that thing, that thing ain't bothering nobody, Colin said with a grin. He kissed her on her cheek and steered Owen toward the garage door. Let's go through here, though so that monster doesn't see us going through the front door. Owen laughed nervously. This was so surreal, he and his childhood best friend sneaking through the garage while a monster stood a mile away, all for the purpose of seeing a nice truck. Colin hit the garage door button and the motor overhead roared to life. 
Owen felt incredibly uncomfortable as the door grinded open. He wondered if Silver could hear it from where it stood. Colin hit the button again to stop the door midway up. Then he and Owen ducked under it and stood in the driveway. Colin ducked in front of his truck and peeked around the hood to the monster. Owen did the same. When Colin turned around to look at Owen, he had a huge smile on his face. Ooh, snap, son. This is exciting, he said, then stood up to full height and strutted to the driver's side door. Boy, that thing doesn't care about us. Owen stood up and walked over to the passenger door, never taking his eyes off Silver. Colin pulled his keys from his shorts and unlocked the doors. He climbed into his massive truck and sat in the driver's seat. Owen climbed into the passenger seat. Ooh, snap, son, Colin repeated. This truck is the hotness, right? Owen nodded and studied the dashboard. It was gray and shiny as if it had been waxed recently. The cab had that new car smell that he loved, and the seat was nice and comfortable. There was a bag of balloons by his feet. He tried not to step on it. Seat belt's broken, though, Colin said. I'm getting it fixed soon. Warranty will take care of it. When did you buy it? A few weeks ago. Brand new. Owen saw a bunch of CDs on the floor. You listen to rap? he asked. Boy, you silly, Colin said, and Owen suddenly remembered how Colin often used that phrase when they were younger, along with, ooh, snap, son. I've always listened to rap, don't you remember? Owen honestly didn't, and that added to his woes over his defective memory. Want to go for a ride? Colin asked. Where? Around the neighborhood, silly. We don't have to go near old Silver. Okay. They closed their doors, and Colin started up the truck. It was surprisingly quiet. He backed down the driveway and drove down the hill, past the other houses. An old woman watched them drive by as she rocked in her chair on her front porch. She had a black shawl draped over her shoulders. That's Mrs. Summer, Colin said. She's weird but nice. He turned left, away from the street that led to the giant, and headed deeper into the neighborhood. The huge oak tree loomed over a lot of houses, and Owen felt the neighborhood was more like a forest. He and Colin rode mostly in silence, save for the music that was playing from the stereo. Considering Colin was a country boy, Owen had been surprised that he was into rap. Owen didn't listen to music much and didn't have a preference. He liked the song that was playing, though. There was a big yellow pump in the back seat. Owen stared at it for a moment, then said, What's that for? Colin looked, then said, For the balloons by your feet. Sydney's birthday is coming up next week, and I wanted to throw a big party for her. I don't do things small, especially when it comes to my baby. Owen smiled. He still hadn't gotten used to his friend being a father. Does Sidney have a lot of baby friends? He asked sarcastically. Shut up, butthole, Colin said with a laugh. And yes, she does. She's very popular. They were heading back to the house now. Owen had been surprised that his worries over everything, including silver and blue, had vanished during the ride and wondered if that had been Colin's intention all along. There's something I have to do, someone I have to look for, Owen said. Colin didn't reply, only listened. Can the guy stay here while I go out? Owen asked. Depends. Are they potty trained? Am I going to have to feed them or anything? Because I already have a baby. Colin grinned. So did Owen. Doug and Curtis sat on the couch. The TV turned to the news. Blue hadn't moved since sending the signal to Silver. Silver was still standing at the top of the hill, looking around. Doug held a bag of chips, launching a few into the air to catch in his mouth. One chip bounced off his cheek and fell into the couch. 
crap, I lost one, he whispered, looking around for the Matthewses. Keep it to yourself and you should be fine. Curtis wasn't looking at Doug or the TV. He was still drawing in his notepad. Doug put the bag aside and looked at the pad. What are you doing? Curtis stopped drawing and showed it to him. Silver and blue. They were still in black and white, but Doug got the point. Were standing back to back, while people fled from them. There were dozens of cars and buildings on fire. The giants were destroying everything around them. Nice drawing? Doug said nervously. This is what's going to happen if we don't do something soon, Curtis said, staring seriously at Doug. We don't know that for sure, Doug countered, looking to the TV. I can feel it. Dude, are you going to steal the orb or something? Because that's just not cool. Doug frowned. The thought has crossed my mind, but no, I'm not going to do that. I don't trust Owen, though. Did you see the way he threw that car at Birch Plaza? He's hiding something. On the TV, the news was reporting that a few tanks and helicopters were headed downtown and that the government was going to try to communicate with Blue. The same was planned for Silver. Given this unprecedented event, said Hal Morris of KDFH News, plans to communicate with the alien beings are underway. It is unknown whether the Blue Giant's actions earlier this morning were unintentional or an act of hostility. Hal stood at the opposite end of the street from Blue. The Giant could be seen standing idly by in the background. For how long it would continue to do so was still unknown. Turning left on Bear Hollow brought Owen directly in front of Silver, though the monster was a mile away. He could still see it just over the slope in front of him. He drove the little car slowly, afraid of attracting its attention. This was the only way around it. Owen looked over to Dee, who was partially covered with the blanket. He desperately wanted someone to talk to right now, and the robot was on for some reason. Owen was afraid to even sneeze. He was so afraid, his heart pounded furiously. The orb was in the back seat, most definitely powered off. He had checked several times before starting this trip. He wasn't even sure what he was doing anymore. The plan had been to look for Chris in Birch Plaza, but chances were Chris wouldn't still be there. Owen toyed with the idea of activating the orb just a little to see if it would attract Chris, but then thought that doing so would also attract the giants. But not the shapeshifters. Owen knew they couldn't come out during the day, for fear of suffering a deadly sunburn. He was getting closer to Silver now. Too close. He slowed down even more, so that he was hardly moving at all. The road consisted of only two lanes, with ditches on either side. Silver was at the top of the highest slope, completely blocking passage. The Matthewses joined Doug and Curtis in the living room to watch the communication attempt with Blue. Vanessa held Sidney, patting her on the back. Five tanks were rolling down the streets of downtown, surrounding the giant on both sides and in front. There were also a few helicopters hovering overhead. Blue looked at them all in turn. There was no telling what was going to happen. The cameraman was taking in the entire scene, getting the cops' reactions. That's Officer Fisher, Doug suddenly said, recognizing him immediately. The officer was talking to a woman in a police uniform. Suddenly, Blue gave a loud, horrible moan. Doug recognized it as the sound he had heard coming from the sky on their way here. The godly voice. That's when the unthinkable happened. The tanks blew up one after another, and then the choppers did the same, their fiery remains crashing down into the street. Vanessa screamed, and Colin pulled her into his arms. Sidney started to whine. The cameraman, who had been panicking a minute before, running from the fiery crash of the copters, 
was now aiming at Blue once again. Something was happening with the giant. Its chest was separating, revealing a dark cavity. Blue reached into his chest and pulled something out. It looked like a scepter of some kind, and it looked to be made of chrome. Doug guessed it was about twenty or thirty feet long. No, longer. It was stretching in both directions. On one end, there was a large, round lens. And then Blue jammed the scepter into the ground with earth-shaking force. The camera shook violently, and many people, the cameraman included, fell to the ground. Blue bellowed to the sky with that same shriek from before. Curtis got up from the couch and ran to the window. Doug and the others followed. Sure enough, Silver was reaching into his chest and pulling out a scepter. There was a tiny car on the road in front of it. It was stopped in front of the giant. Doug recognized it. Silver drove the ever-growing spear into the ground, causing a horrible rumble that could be felt from the house. Sidney started crying. Do not approach us, a deep voice echoed from the TV. It was blue. The giant was speaking, though its lips weren't moving. We are searching for something. Once we find it, we will leave. Do not approach us again, or we will respond with violence. Owen looked up at the scepter that Silver had just planted in front of him. It had a large lens on its tip. The lens was growing steadily brighter. The giant reached into its chest again and pulled out another scepter. Owen put the car into reverse and backed away quickly.